This video is sponsored by Case Filters. Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Express Photography. A happy new year to everybody. I hope 2024 is going to be your best year to date. Uh, now in this video, I want to cover five steps to improve your photography in 2024. Now, I've been a landscape photographer for over 20 years and I'm looking to improve my photography in 2024. Um, so maybe let's look at some of the ways that I'm planning on going about that and ways that you can move forward to really make significant gains this year rather than just getting to uh, Christmas time in December and kind of looking back in the year and it's been another year of kind of wishy-washy, haven't really got where you wanted, feeling a bit frustrated. I think the first step is to define what is better for you. What do you mean by getting better? Do you want your uh, photography to be more popular? Do you want it to get in front of a bigger audience? Do you want to get more likes? All of those things are going to take you down a path of making pretty photographs, going to popular locations and processing them in a certain way to get that attraction on social media. That is not really what the expressive photography way is all about. We're more focused here on improving ourselves, improving our relationships with ourselves, improving our relationships with the landscape, making photographs that we believe are more intuitively us um, and make us feel good about ourselves. Photography should be fun. Expressive photography should be fun. So if you are the type of person who wants to make photos for you and to explore your creativity, then you're in the right place. But first of all, ask that question to yourself. What does getting better mean? If it means new techniques, if there's a new piece of equipment that you think is going to help you to do something different, then perhaps that is a good thing to do. Um, here's a shot that was taken with a macro lens. Um, I tend to do a shot, an awful lot of my shooting locally and this was a little thing that I decided to do was to play around with a macro lens more and that is decidedly something that you need a specific piece of equipment for. So don't be afraid of making a purchase or two if you think that that is going to be something that you need. I think step number two is to create a plan. Um, when I was in finance, it was very normal at the start of the year to set goals and to set plans of how you were going to get there. And that's a very common thing in business is to just make a plan and stick to it and know that if you just keep doing those right things, then good things are going to happen. I don't think photography and creativity are much different. And I think if you make a plan to win, then you are increasing the chances of doing so. So what that plan might look like are things like um, how much time do you have available? You know, if you only have one weekend a month or one hour a day, then that gives you a very, very different amount of time that you can commit to your development. Nothing gets better just on its own. It needs nourished. Uh, every gardener in the world knows how much care and attention it takes to nurture a garden, uh, nurturing pot plants in the house. All of these types of things, they need care and attention and our brain is no different. For us to change, we need to create good habits, we need to create good behaviours and that is my tip number two. Make a plan and then stick to that plan. Now the main chunk of this video is really going to come to the next point, point number three. And that is to create a local project. Immerse yourself somewhere that you can get to easily and quickly and pretty much whenever you want. If you focus on something close to home, it means you don't have to invest in travel. You don't have to invest big amounts of time to get there. You can go out when the conditions look like they're going to give you what you want to deliver the type of uh, images that you have in your mind. I'm going to show you this series of photographs here. And what happened was all around us, we live in a woodland, we're surrounded by birch trees and pine trees and fir trees and larch and oaks. Um, and when we moved here, I kind of dedicated myself a lot to shooting locally. And the fact that that coincided with the COVID pandemic arriving meant that it was very easy for me to commit time and go out regularly. And some of the trees here, these birch trees, for example, uh, there's, this is a mixture of birch and larch. And for me, it was the color palette and the contrast and the atmosphere that these trees were creating. 
And I tried to find lots of different ways to take lots of different styles of photographs. Uh, obviously, a lot of them are squares because I'm, I'm a square nut. Um, but all of these photographs are really just a celebration of my local environment, just things that are really close to home and how they change in different lights, different atmospheric conditions. And if you live in a city or you live next to a park or you live by the coast or wherever you live, there must be somewhere close by that you can dedicate a project to. I spent an awful lot of time and have thousands and thousands of photographs of the trees of my local area in all the different seasons and I just love this collection. Maybe a book might be an idea. Before we get to point number four, um, I just want to update you a little bit on the year ahead. Um, next week I'm heading off to Spain to meet up with my buddy Adam Gibbs and we're going to be running a workshop together. Um, as I've mentioned before Christmas, I've been suffering a little bit from an SI joint dysfunction and it has been causing me an awful lot of pain. And while I am improving and getting an awful lot better with my mobility and the pain is much reduced, I am not too keen on carrying this around with me, uh, not just in the airport and to get there, but just the general lugging it around. So my GFX 100 Mark II will not be joining me in Spain. And instead I'm gonna be taking its little uh, grandson, uh, which is my X S20, which is a 26 megapixel crop sensor uh, Fuji camera. So it's got, you know, very much similar menus and so forth. And I'm gonna be taking this along with my case filters and a little travel tripod. And that is all the gear I'm going to be taking with me to Spain. And part of that is to prove to myself that I can make what I consider to be good photographs with a very, very limited amount of gear. Will it have the resolution of the GFX 102? No, it won't. But I'm hoping to bring back some photographs that I'm proud of that I've enjoyed making. I'd like to thank Case Filters for their continued support of our work and would recommend anyone looking to upgrade their filter systems to check out the great range of options available. I exclusively use Case Filters because of their exceptional quality and durability. They never let me down. Click on the link in the description below and use the code Alistair for a 5% discount. Point number four is something I mentioned quite a lot on the channel, which is work on your attitude. Um, if you have a negative mindset, then you will take that with you into the landscape. If you put pressure on yourself to produce a certain type of photograph and it doesn't come together, then that is your relationship with your expectations needs to be worked on. There's no two ways about it that who you are is going to dictate the type of photographer you are, the type of experience you have, and how much you rely on external validation versus self-actualization for your own happiness. So at the end of the day, I think it's really, really important to develop our attitude and that should be part of our plan. To go in there, to go into the landscape, to open up the computer with an open mind and an open heart and just pour our passion into the landscape and our processing. At the end of the day, photography should be fun. None of us got into photography to be stressed out. None of us got into photography to make our lives worse. We all got into it to either relieve stress or to release our creativity or to be passionate about something or to explore a particular subject. And so many of us get pulled in all sorts of directions by looking at too many YouTube videos, by looking at too many other photographers' photographs and really just getting lost in that tsunami of images that exists out there these days. Our attitude is gonna make big, big differences fast. The final point, number five, is don't make excuses. It's so common, uh, New Year's resolutions in particular, like it's the number of people who stop drinking on January the 1st and then the first weekend, it's they, they find an excuse to have a couple of beers because they're going out for a date night or they're meeting up some buddies to go to a soccer match. At the end of the day, there's always excuses that can be we can use to convince our weak mind and body that uh, we don't need to stick to the thing that we want to do. Don't make excuses for uh, failing to live up to your own plan. Don't make excuses saying, oh, well, if only I could travel to Iceland or Patagonia or Arches National Park or whatever. It's 
creativity has got doesn't have a GPS location attached to it. I've made some of my most favorite photographs within walking distance of the house. Uh, so at the end of the day, I don't think we can make excuses about I can only make good photographs if I'm, you know, in a certain place at a certain time. I hope you found this a useful little pep talk uh, at the beginning of January. Um, we are going to be reducing the amount of content that we share on YouTube. Um, I have so much going on this year with various things, both professionally and personally, that uh, I need to manage my time a little bit better. So most months we're going to be sending out two videos now instead of four. Uh, we're going to be back on a Sunday at 6 p.m. UK time uh, and every second Sunday. Sunday, we will be posting some content. Every now and then I will be posting additional videos, in particular vision and light interviews with my peers, fellow photographers, fellow creatives who are producing exciting and dynamic work and I love having a chat with them really about their motives and their uh, perspectives on the creative process. Uh, if you're not a subscriber of the channel, do us a favor, click that subscribe button and hit the bell notification. A very small percentage of our viewers are actually subscribed to the channel and it would be great to add you to our list. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again when I get back from Spain. But until then, bye for now.